All right, this is gonna be my book review for Dean Koontz's False Memory. Um, I've been a Dean Koontz fan for a very long time, since I got back into reading in 2011. Uh, like a lot of people, I get into Stephen King first and then Koontz. A lot of people recommend him when they recommend King. Um, and definitely in the 70s and 80s, and maybe even up to the early 90s, I would say they are comparable enough. They both wrote some supernatural, some horror, even though Stephen King um, proudly and happily accepts the horror label. He doesn't care. Dean Koontz, he doesn't necessarily care for it so much. Even in Phantoms, which is a straight horror novel, he even explains in one of the afterwards how he tried to make um, tried to make it like a scientific reason for the, the spooky stuff that happens. But um, I think it definitely helped his career to be named Koontz, you know, to have the same similar last name as King, to be right next to him on the bookshelf uh, as King was uber popular. And for Koontz to have stuff like whispers and similar looking covers and similar sounding stories, I definitely don't think it hurt Koontz's career at all. That being said, I'm not taking anything away from Dean Koontz. He was publishing before Stephen King. He was a pure sci-fi writer. I own a bunch of his old sci-fi books. I have not read them, but I'm gonna someday. And uh, then he got more into some horror supernatural thrillers. And as he got into the 90s and later on, uh, more of his own brand. By then he was so popular, he could just publish whatever the hell he wants which can be a little bit of a problem in a book like False Memory. Uh, I have found that pretty much all of Kuntz's books that are massive, and there's a few, especially around like uh, the year 2000, like there's False Memory, there's One Door Away From Heaven, there's From the Corner of His Eye. These are like big books, especially compared to the rest of his bibliography. Um, they are not really necessarily, uh, they don't necessarily need to be that long. And I do think that Koontz, certainly compared to King, is definitely more formulaic. And, uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, he always... This is a problem that's also in false memory, which... Let me just start with a synopsis, and then I'll, uh, I'll talk about false memory. But it's basically about Marty Rhodes, her husband, Dusty, who has a weird brother named Skeet, half-brother. And um, Marty has a friend named Susan who suffers from, I think it's agoraphobia. Don't quote me, it's been a little while since I read and listened to it. Um, but she basically is afraid to leave her house. She's, late, she's afraid of any social contact. And then Marty uh, ends up becoming, a, uh, you know, afflicted with her own problem, which is she's scared of herself. She's scared that she's gonna do something to her husband. She's scared that she's going to uh, kill him, basically, or, you know. So it's actually a pretty cool premise and it's actually a pretty cool thriller. The problem is as I'm now 37 years old and I'm not 25 anymore where everything Coons wrote was so cool, I guess I still had to mature some more because this book, it, there's a good thriller in there, but it is surrounded by so much Coons. And what I mean by so much Coons is all his protagonists are perfect people, absolutely beautiful, pure, perfect souls, angels on earth. All of his bad guys, extremely evil. They hate books. They, they always hate books. You know, books are great. TV is bad if you're reading a Koontz book. That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. All his bad guys hate books. Um, all of his, all of his good guys are just so perfect. The dogs are like. It's just, it's the same stuff over and over again that gets really repetitive. And the problem with this, especially if you listen to it on audiobook, is it's just so damn ridiculous. Within like the first 10 pages or the first 10 minutes on CD, you, you learn that, you know, this guy Dusty and his brother, his brother's on the roof. He's about to jump off. Of course, Dusty is like some super genius guy who just wanted to be a regular house painter, you know, for some reason. But his brother, Skeet, who has like mental problems and drug problems and is up on the roof and he's going to commit suicide. He's going to jump off. And which is which is a good way to start it with, with the tension. But like you learn very early on that 
Dusty is a psychological pajeriac. Now, if that is not a Kuntzism, a psychological pajeriac. And then Skeet goes on to say, yeah, he heard that on 60 Minutes. And it's like, and then there's bad humor about how the dad used to call him his little pee-pee. And it's like, the problem with Kuntz is that it seems like he wants his books, False Memory in particular, to be a great suspense story. But he also wants it to be really funny. But he also wants it to be really literary. And these things just don't work together. They just, they just, it's just a big ball of mess. It's just a, I don't want to call it a big ball of shit. Because I don't think the book's total shit. But it's a big ball of shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... The, the ridiculous stuff, the ridiculous sayings, the, the, everything is so over the top. The similes, there's so many food descriptions. And then, you know, right in the beginning, um, Skeet runs to jump off of the roof. You know he's not going to die. Yeah, it's a Coons novel. He's not going to kill off a good guy right away. And this guy Skeet is like, the way he's written, Now he is supposed to be like a little mentally less apt, I guess. But the way he's written, like, as they're having this conversation on the roof, a bird takes a shit, it goes on to his shoe, Skeet's shoe, Skeet twirls his fingers around in the bird shit, talking about, this is my life now. And it's like, oh my god, man. And then there's another part, which I thought was really funny, where Skeet sees Dusty and his wife come into uh, to his room, he's, he's at a rehab now, and he blows bubbles in his milk through a straw to show his excitement. Like, what the fuck is that shit? And then Dusty says to the dog, something about him and Marty. I forget if it was about marriage or... Basically, Dusty says something positive. He's talking to the dog. And the dog smiles as if he likes the idea of this. And it's like, it's just so freaking preposterous. And as much as I love Coots... And I'm still a fan of his because he just has such a big bibliography. It's, like, really cool to get into it and to knock off all his different genres and different books. And he's got plenty of good books, but, oh, my God. By this time, like, late 90s, early 2000s, his books are just too damn cootsy. That's the problem. And, and uh, there's a lot of, like, the dog takes a shit, which he refers to as making his toilet and it's like oh my god man <laughs> like and he really really likes talking about food there is so much food descriptions and so much about characters eating in a Kuntz novel it's just like wow and uh there's more stuff I can't quite quite remember all of it now I've been meaning to do this review and I'm sort of just winging it here but false memory it's a good thriller but you if you're like me, I mean, you're going to cringe a lot. And if you're not a Coons fan and you don't, you're not willing to tolerate all the bullshit that he puts in his books, you probably won't make it through. Like if some random person who wants like a serious book, if you gave this to them, they would not make it very far. I think they would give up on it. And it's like, it's unfortunate because if you strip down all that bullshit, all these similes and metaphors, all these big words and all this, like, he's just trying, it's like, he's trying too hard that's what it comes off as and it's like instead of just being a good writer and writing a good book he tries to write something that's so incredible and amazing and it just fails it just comes off as trying too hard and it's just it's unfortunate because his books that are good are at this point in his career at least just surrounded by bullshit man and uh if you listen to it on audiobook you are really going to cringe because there's one part where the doctor like again it's not, he's not good enough just to make his characters evil. They have to be so incredibly over-the-top evil that it, it comes off as cartoonish. And the, do, uh, the, the, um, the villain, if you will, is talking to somebody. He has this person in a trance, and he's, like, talking about his wife and, like, mm, oh, she's so succulent. I think I'll call her my little pork chop. And it's like, I'm cracking up over here, but it's supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be tense. And yeah, I mean, Dean Koontz, like, as, as far as I'm concerned, he was maybe in the 80s and 90s on par with Stephen King. And then I don't know what the hell happened. He just went off, like, off the freaking deep end and just, like, I, I don't know what the hell. It's like, and he says that he writes his pages 30 and 40 times over. I can see that. I can totally see that. And it's like, instead of just flowing naturally and letting it be, 
he has to try to make it so absolutely perfect. And it's just like, I hate to say it, but False Memory could have been a great thriller. And it's, it's overall mediocre at best. But when I think of this book, the first thing I think of is all the ridiculousness. I don't think about the good tension, which there is. I don't think about some of the twists, which there's a few, but I just, it's like, oh my God, man. And then one thing I really hate, and Kuntz's books have done this a couple times, something happens to characters. And I'm talking, they get like attempted murder, like serious stuff. And they're just like, oh, we can't go to the cops. And the reason they cited in false memory that they can't go to the cops is, well, uh, we figured we wouldn't get very far. And it's like, dude, come on. You know, and again, with the ridiculousness, there's characters in here where they're, the one person's name is Holden Caulfield. That's literally a character's name in here. It's one somebody's one of the character's fathers or stepfathers or something. And there's also a character named Fig fucking Newton. His name is Fig Newton. How are we supposed to take your book serious when you have a character named Fig Newton? And there's one really bad joke, which I... Uh, which was just, it's, some of Kuntz, Kuntz can be funny. I find when, like, he writes nonfiction, like blog posts or afterwards, actually really funny. But his fiction, man, like, when his characters are making jokes, they suck. So there's one joke in here where their, um, their friend is going to watch their dog because they have to go take care of this stuff, you know. And the guy, Fig Newton, literally goes, my mom is a cat woman. Not the Catwoman from Batman, but just a Catwoman. And I'm like, is that supposed to be funny? If you said that your mom was a Catwoman, who the fuck would assume that you mean she's Catwoman from Batman? Nobody would ever think that. It was like, why the hell does he have to do... Oh my God, man. And it's like, sometimes he... Like that, he, he dumbs down. Like, did he really have to explain that? Nobody's going to assume that you meant she was fucking Catwoman from Batman, dude. Like, <laughs> and oh, there was something else I was just thinking of where, where he dumbed something down. Oh, yeah, it was like, oh, yeah, Skeet wanted to go to sleep, but he didn't mean a nap. He meant the deep sleep from which he would not return. Like, it's just like, dude, you don't have to spell it out. But, like, maybe he does because these kind of books, somebody who would give this five stars, I'm sorry, I just, I don't know. Great. If you can enjoy it, great, but Holy shit, you got to have a lot of tolerance to five-star this thing, man. Or you just have to be such, like, a devout Coons follower that, that you can't help it. But, yeah, I mean, I still like Dean Coons. But with a book like False Memory, I knew it was going to be some ridiculous bullshit. I knew when it was 700 pages, there's going to be a lot of cringing. There's a lot of eye-rolling. There's a lot of bad humor. And there's a lot of... Uh, words that you would only find in a thesaurus that would not come out naturally and again he writes the same page 30 and 40 times and it's like it hurts a story it comes off as trying too hard it, it it's it comes off as like way more complicated than it needs to be and it's just again it just comes out as like a big jumbled mess because he's trying to do like 17 different things at once and instead of doing like a couple of them well they all just like conflict with each other you know and so yeah it is what it is i mean uh false memory it's okay i'd only recommend it if you like like me you plan to read his old bibliography one day which maybe i won't i don't know man i don't know how i'm gonna feel at 47 about his books but that is my uh my review of false memory two stars out of five not a total disaster but holy shit this thing was cringy <laughs> That's my review. Have a good one.